everybody. It's Friday Night Fights. Brian Kenny and Max Kellerman here. We also have heavyweight Cliff Etienne. Throw him in there as well. He's unbeaten. Sid Vanderpool and Glenn Johnson in our main event. Vanderpool rising super middleweight. See what he has for us tonight. Yeah, first of all, Etienne's a hungry young heavyweight puncher. That's always fun. Vanderpool is a rising super middleweight contender. Now, how many times have we seen rising contenders give uninspired performances? Doesn't really capture anyone's imagination. All it takes is one spectacular outing on television, and you're a star. Vanderpool has an opportunity here against the legitimate, credible opponent in Glenn Johnson, who's extended Bernard Hopkins and Sven Otke, two world champions. So we're going to wait to see what he has. Hopefully, we get something special. Iron Mike Tyson then and now. We break down the tape. He fights on Saturday night. Also, Shane Mosley and Vernon Forrest, the report cards are in. We'll have that for you, but first, live boxing with Bob Papa and Teddy Atlas. Guys? Thank you very much, Brian and Max. Friday Night Fights on ESPN2, presented by Miller High Life, J.C. Candelo, Alex Benima from the ruins in New Orleans, in the warehouse district. Glad you can join us for Friday Night Fights. Very enthusiastic crowd in this old converted warehouse. Pretty cool setting as we bring you 10 rounds in the junior middleweight division. Alex Benima is 24 years of age, born in Zaire, now fighting out of Dallas, Texas. He is 16 and 1 with 11 knockouts. And his opponent tonight is J.C. Candelo. Candelo was born in Colombia, now fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia. He's 26 years of age, weighed in 149 pounds, a natural welterweight. 17, 2, and 3 with 14 knockouts. So we are getting set for tonight's first bout of the evening here in New Orleans. Let's take a look at the rules as governed by the unified rules that will be used tonight in all of the bouts here in New Orleans. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight count, only the referee can stop it. Fighter cannot be saved with the bell in any round. Accidental cut will go to the scorecards after four rounds are complete. So you get a look at the ruins here in New Orleans, Louisiana. Not far from the French Quarter. Elmo Adolf is the referee for tonight's first bout of the evening. Bonima and Candelo know each other. In fact, they were both in Big Bear helping Oscar De La Hoya get ready for Felix Trinidad. They actually sparred together a few times. If you remember the name Candelo, he was the outstanding boxer on a series we had back in 1997 of Latin American countries called Boxino here on ESPN2. He advanced to the finals, all with knockouts, and on September the 2nd of 1997 in Louisiana here on ESPN2, he scored a fifth-round knockout of Wilfredo Vasquez. So, Bonima and Candelo getting set. Now, Candelo did not fight at all in 1998. He was supposed to use Boxino as a springboard, but he had immigration problems because he just bolted from the Columbia national team as an amateur back in 1992, had immigration problems, and had to take all of 1998 off, and Candelo feels that has sort of stymied his progress. Take a look at the knockout ratio, 4-2, 64% for Candelo, no knockouts past the sixth. All of Bonima's knockouts have come within the first three rounds. Candelo's a taller guy here. He's going to want to do more than just move around. He takes his height away when he just moves away. Because then he can't establish that jab and that distance. You don't want to just move. You just want to be able to step by punching and then stepping. Slow your man down a little bit. Slow down the small of Bonema. Okay, what about the fact that... Oh, good right hand by Bonema. What about the fact that uh, these two guys work together in the Oscar De La Hoya camp, helping De La Hoya get ready for Felix Trinidad. They actually work together. They know each other very well. Does that create an awkwardness? No. One of them's going to have a little bit more confidence. Whoever thinks that they were the better, they obviously, we don't know. That's their secret. They're going to have a little bit of extra confidence as far as what they think they can do in this fight. And of course, not only their experience boxing those couple times they box each other, but watching each other when they box with De La Hoya. I'm sure each one has picked out certain things that they think could work. 19 feet by 19 feet inside the ropes. Candelo in the white, red, and blue. Lima, the technician, in the screen. Again, right now, Candelo not using that height. He's moving around. You take that height away a little bit when you move around. And that's why Benima just walked right in. 
You have to use that jab when you have that height. Establish that height. And not fall in with your punches like Candelo did there. See, even though he got those punches off good, Bob, he fell in a little bit, Candelo. You want to punch and get full extension on the punches when you're the taller man. And the knock heads. Wide right hand by Bonima misses. If you're the taller man and you're falling into punch, that means you're letting your shorter opponent get close enough to hit you. Instead of working his way in. You're giving him a pass to get in. You're giving him a key to that door. Final 20 seconds of this. First round scheduled for 10 junior middleweights. Alex Bonima, 16 and 1 in the green with 11 knockouts. JC Candelo, 17, 2 and 3 with 14 knockouts. The taller man in red, white, and blue. There's the bell to end round number one. Well, coming up tonight here on Friday Night Fights in our main event, we'll get a look at a couple of super middleweights. Sid Vanderpool out of Canada. Talented young man, 27 and 1 with 18 knockouts in his career. And he'll be squaring off against Glenn Coffey Johnson, fighting out of Miami by way of Jamaica. Johnson is twice challenged for a world championship. Glad you can join us for Friday Night Fights here on ESPN2. Bob Papa along with Teddy Atlas. And Teddy, when you take a look at a guy like Vanderpool, it's total chaos for him. First, he was supposed to fight Thomas Tate, then Esteban Cervantes. Both guys pulled out for different reasons, so now he gets Johnson. Vanderpool has this glossy record at 27-1, and one, but not a lot is known about him. What does he bring to the dance? Oh, he's a southpaw, first of all, and he's a real talented southpaw. Technically, he's very sound. He's a good puncher. He's got good hand speed. He's a real good guy, it looks like, so far, but he hasn't been tested. And the funny thing is, Johnson, who's the late arrival, probably the most experienced guy that he's fought so far. It's just a matter of what kind of condition Johnson's in. Yeah, Johnson took this fight on literally five days' notice. He is the third opponent for Vanderpool, but Johnson feels that his experience in two shots of the World Championship will carry him tonight, even though he's not in the best of shape. The Johnson camp thinks that they can actually knock out Vanderpool tonight. We'll find out in our main event. Round number two underway between J.C. Candelo in the red, white, and blue trunks. Alex Bunima in the green. And take a look at the punch numbers in the first round. And you see that Handel landed 4 of 36, Bunima 5 of 29. Both men landed three jabs apiece. Not a lot of action in that first round. Slapping right hand by Bunima. Again, this one figures pretty easy. All you have to do is look at the physiques of both guys. Candelo should start using that jab and sitting down on his punches and fighting or punching at the right distance. But Nemo, of course, wants to use that jab to take the taller man's jab away. At least that's what I would like him to do. Not try to force his way in because he's a shorter guy with hooks. Use that jab to get in. Move your head. That's what he's trying to do. Right hand over the top by Benima miss. Candelo we've seen him at his best here on ESPN2 was at the welterweight. He's fighting in this junior middleweight range. He says he can make the welterweight limit, but he says, I have a family to support, so I just can't box. He has a full-time job as well, working for a furniture company in the Atlanta area. So far this round, Benima has the right idea. He's not only pressing the fight, but Bob is going to the body. You got a tall man in front of you, likes to use his legs, go to the body. Got a lot of body in front of you when he's tall. Take those legs away a little bit. Wide punches by Bonima, they're not landing. But Candelo's not throwing much back. What Bonima should do is once he gets inside, he should stay around instead of just getting out. He should stay around, see if he can catch Candelo pulling back. Sometimes that tall man pulls back a little bit high. There's a lot of target there to catch as he's stepping back. Instead of taking for granted that it's all over with, stay in that pocket a little bit and see if he can nail the man going back. Maybe trying to mix up his attack and go to the body. Candelo headhunting. That time, you can see Benima tried to catch Candelo pulling back. I think that might be a spot for him in there. If he's inside, he should try to see if he can force the taller man backwards and step with him. Right there. 
Not a lot of clean punches being landed by either guy. A lot of slap as we hit the end of round two. Back in 1833, we dealt mainly with life insurance, so we called ourselves Standard Life. Over the years, we've diversified to provide you with a full range of investment products designed for long-term financial stability and performance. So we're certainly not standard. And and grilled on Canada's slip for J.C. Candela. Yeah, his leg went out on the apron. It's a short apron there. He's just, like you said, his leg went right out from under him. That's why you want to have a, enough of a ledge, so to speak, on that apron. Because the foot goes underneath that bottom rope. You need something to stand on. Candelo and Bonima get ready for the start of round number three. So far, not a lot of accuracy in the first two rounds of this fight. But Bonima's trying to control the action. Now Candelo throwing some body shots. And I can see what's going on in the mind, I think, anyway, of Candelo. He's going to start using that uppercut this round, I think, Bob. He's got a shorter man forcing his way in. Well, that's after he gets over this, he will. Low blow by Bonima. It was love. Red time. Now, under the rules, Elmo Adolf calls time. And Candela will get a chance and an opportunity to regroup. It was a low blow. Okay, let's take a look at it. It was a low let me shot. Know when you're ready, okay? Just take, take your a look time at it let me right here. It was a left hand. All right, wait, hold on, hold on one minute. There. Yeah, well, right. it's no, coming no, no, up no. a little bit. If you're going to get hurt, again, we've mentioned this many now. times okay, on our that forecast again, that those protectors right. are leather cups encased with iron. So they do a lot of protection. The only way you get hurt is if it's not fitted right or the guy punches up. Well, Candelo is okay. He goes on. He's a bit angry now. He's starting to open up a little bit. He's got to punch at the right distance, Bob. When Candelo punches at the right distance, he has an edge because he's a taller man. Right there. If he gets his hands extended like he's starting to do now, he's going to have an edge with the shorter guy. When he doesn't punch it too late, he allows the short of the Nima to walk in. There's the Nima walking in. It's very important again for Candelo to get those hands off at the right distance. He doesn't want to be inside getting more. Not that he can't have moments inside, but to fight the right fight. For what he has that the other guy doesn't have, he should be punching right about now, right at this distance. And if he's bouncing or step, moving around on his legs, then a lot of times he'll take that chance away from himself. He's got to be set. Benima has been knocked out once. In February of 1998 in Louisiana, knocked out in the first round by Anthony Jones. That was at 152 pounds. There was an opportunity for Benima to catch Candelo stepping off the ropes. I think he's going to have a lot of those opportunities tonight if he looks for them. He's a taller man, a lot of times when he steps back, if you step with him, a lot of times they take for granted you're not going to go with him. If you go with him, you're going to get a shot. But again, the guy's tall, there's a lot of target. First, you got to get in close before you can do that. Jab by Benima flicked back the head of Candelo. We're half footed to go in round three. Even that time when Candelo threw his punches, he fell in. You don't want to fall in when you're the taller guy. This should make the job easier for the shorter man. Now he's got you in punching distance. Final seconds of round number three. Alex Benima and J.C. Candelo. Trying to pick up the accuracy. 
Jim Simple, Agent 43, reporting for duty. Our mission is simple, simple. To show Canadians how to save... is to work with a company who pioneered the direct way of using the internet as a business tool. Dell built their business around this direct model, which made them a forerunner in e-business. They provide... It's some great food down on Bourbon Street in New Orleans. Glad you can join us for Friday Night Bites. Bob Papa along with Teddy Atlas inside the ruins, an old warehouse in the warehouse district. Set up nicely for boxing. The one problem, Teddy, we're having very cool weather here uh, throughout the United States and even here in New Orleans and it's quite drafty in this building. There's no heat. It's an old warehouse. Will that have an effect on the fighters? Yeah, that can have an effect. That's a good point. Guys come out cold. They don't get warmed up. You have one guy whose style is to start a little faster. Another guy who's naturally a little bit of a slow starter. You add in the cold weather. All of a sudden you can get punches landing earlier than they normally would. So you got to be aware of that as a trainer. You got to be on top of all that. You might want to bring your guy in with a with, with a, you know, with a sweat, sweat top on, something to keep warm. So he's not cold when he first steps in there. Candelo, hot dog a little bit. You see that Candelo was much busier in round number three. And Bonima trying to look away. I mentioned it in the last round, didn't quite transpire. I thought Candela would start using that right uppercut a little bit more. He's got a man walking to him. He's got the height on him. He can get that punch off at the right distance. He might be able to catch Benima walking in. He starts in his spots, but he doesn't stay with him. Benima in the green, a four-time Zaire national champion. Did not have an opportunity to participate in the Olympics as he digs to the body of Candelo. Fighters from a lot of the countries in Africa need sponsors in order to go to the Olympics. They need somebody to pay their way, and Bonima did not have a sponsor. I watch your show. So don't do your show, guys. Right, let's even go. Even though he's one of the top amateurs in Zaire. He was born one year after the Ali Foreman fight, which took place in 1974. Both these fighters come from families that have been involved in the sport. Bonima, of course, is part of Fox as an amateur. His brother Carlos is a pro now. He also has another brother who's an amateur. Candelo has two younger brothers who are amateurs. Right here is where you would think Bonima would have the edge. He's a shorter guy. He hasn't had to work his way in. He's been allowed to get in. You're the taller man like Candelo. You want to make the guy pay a price to get in. Make him pay for that real estate. We'll take a look at the jab numbers for Candelo and we'll see that he's not doing a very effective job using that long jab to keep the short of Benima away. We've seen spots again. Benima tried to catch the taller Candelo as he steps back. Right there, he tried to catch him with that left hook, but Candelo had his right hand up. Caught him there. Yeah, kind of right hand. We hit the end of round four. There's pain. Motrin pain. With proven pain relief, Motrin relieves Motrin pain. See how generous she is. This is triple chill cake from McCain. The cake with the ice creamy taste. A big slice goes to her friend here. A big slice goes to her friend here. A big slice goes to her little brother. A big slice goes to her little brother. Triple chill cake from McCain. Have your cake and ice creamy taste too. Well, the shorter Benim has been looking for opportunities to catch the taller Candelo stepping out. And look here as he steps in with that left hook. Well, Candelo was pretty smart there, Bobby. He had the right hand up. 
around his jaw. But look for Benima to keep looking to catch his opponent stepping back. Round number five underway in a scheduled ten round bout between Benima and Candela. Hey, the jab of the taller Candelo really hasn't been there. He's only landed 13 jabs through the first four rounds. And he's throwing about 35 jabs around or so. You see that 13, 167, 8%. That's not getting it done. No. He gets penalized. Right, no, no, no. Good, no, no, no. Right, right, watch out. Keep him up. Candelo right. goes low. Keep him up. You all right? No, 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 don't play around, all right? All right, let's go. All right, let's go, box. Keep him up. Jab from Candela with nothing on it. Candela blocks most of that exchange, but again, Bonima busier. That's smart there when Benima used that jab. There's another lesson. You can be the shorter man, you can out jab the taller man. As long as you jab at the right time. There's that left hook trying to catch him stepping back. Bob, there it is again. He's got an opportunity here, Benima, to catch the tall Candelo as he steps back. Right now, he can step with him. Keep him up, keep him up, JC. Keep him up. Teddy, your scorecard threw four rounds. You got two even rounds in there. You have a 39-39. I have a 38-38, two rounds apiece. I make the case that it's four rounds even. Yeah, it's been close. Uh -huh. You know, there's not a lot happening, huh? No, but a lot of body work can be needed. You wonder if he's getting credit for that. That's why it's hard to always... Scoring can be so subjective. It's hard to know what's going on in the official's mind. Benima's been doing a lot of body work in spots. The taller Cadell has been slow ball punches, but the harder punches you can make an argument, the fleeter punches, even though there's been less of them, have been landed by Benima. But it's only been in spots. Cadell is coming off a split decision loss in December to Michael Lerma. Lerma was down in the first round, but Candelo could not finish him off. Candelo said that because his promoter didn't have the political clout, that's why he didn't get the decision. That's making an excuse. Let's go, let's go, get out of here. Five rounds there. in the books, midway point of the bout. Hey! McDonald's has these retro hockey cards out right now. They include rookie cards of hockey greats like Paul Korea, Yarmir Yager. I'm very touched to recognize him this way. I know my teammates are very proud of me too. No knockdowns in the fight. This guy has been tagged with a low blow. Another man has been affected with the jab. Another man has been very accurate. Punches landed. No shoulders, no shoulders, just punches. Again, it comes down to pretty simple physics here. When the taller Costello moves his hands like right there at the right distance, he doesn't just come up and allow Benima to walk in, he's effective. When Benima's able to walk in, he's effective. When Benima looks, Benima looks to catch the taller man stepping out, he has opportunities to do that. You see through five rounds, Candelo has thrown a lot of punches. Over a hundred more, 115 more than Benito. He's only landed nine more. Again, you can make an argument either way in this fight. Because the harder punches, I believe, to a great extent, have been landed by Benito. Just that he's not always consistent. And right now, he's having a real good spot. Let's see how he finishes the round. Because up to now, he's been spotty. Actually, both guys have been in spot. One thing Bonima has done that Candelo has not. Oh, good left uppercut inside. Short shot by Bonima. Bonima's done better body work. Yeah, he has. No doubt about it. And he should. He's got the taller guy in front of him. Use his legs a little. Now Bonima's starting to get into a rhythm here. And I think he's going to get a chance to nail the taller Candelo stepping out again. In these 
spots here where it looks like nothing's going on. Watch when Candela steps out. Benita should look to step with him. Come on, fellas. Tell you, the lack of a, a jab and an effective jab by Candela has brought this fight to the inside, which favors Benita. Yes, it does. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Let go. And yelling from the corner of Candela. They want him to work the body a little. If you're going to land with something inside, you might as well do something. Keep the punches up. Keep the punches up. And Benito is right where he wants to be, inside. He's been allowed to get there. And Scandello, not just not with the jab, he's just not moving his hands at the right time. Both guys fighting spots. You notice that, Bob? First half of the round, no doubt about it, all Benito. But all of a sudden, he takes a little bit of a nap. And all of a sudden, Cadello had spots. And he ripped off a right hand and a good left hook to the body. Cadello has been smothered this whole round six. Hey! See how generous she is. This is triple chill cake from McCain. The cake with the ice creamy taste. A big slice goes. J.C. Candelo in the white, red, and blue, and Alex Bunima in the green. Begin round number seven of this 10-round junior middleweight bout. Last round, Bunima landed all 12 of his punches were power shots. Coming up in the main event, Sid Vanderpool and Glenn Johnson in a 10-round super middleweight bout. Friday Night Fights on ESPN2, presented by Miller High Life. As we're starting to go into some rounds here, you're looking for a little bit of edge. Candelo something to help him a little bit. He's the only guy in this fight that's been 10 rounds before. That was in his last fight. Benima has gone past round six twice. That's an eight round decision wins. Don't hold him, don't hold him! Either guys have been into the deep waters, as they like to say. Candela will go back to work with Oscar De La Hoya and Big Bear. He says he's learned a lot from De La Hoya. Right hand over the top by the hand. See that pull of Candela there? You can see Benima, as you mentioned, trying to throw that right hand over the top. Shorter man should not be able to throw that right hand over the top of the taller man if the taller man throws the jab at the right distance, because he can't get close enough. But when he doesn't throw it at the right distance, then he can be countered. He throws it from too close, like a three-quarters jab. But really, everything being even, the taller guy should not really get countered with right hands. Again, if he's extending that jab at the right time. Punch out, fella. Don't hold, don't hold, punch. But a lot of times, guys do not step the jab at the right time or at the right distance. That's why you have shorter guys countering taller guys. They're not using their height or their length of their arms. Now, here's a, we're talking about spots. Here's the spot where all of a sudden Benima hasn't been doing anything. Jumped in with a few punches there. But he started to not do much yet. It worked like Candela there. He would not allow himself to be tied up. This is why this fight is hard to judge. Both guys take their moments. Both guys take breaks. Both fighting in spots. They could give Candela the edge in this round for just keeping the fight to the outside. I know I put my stick in here. Kulta, what's that in my belly part that you're sick? This is ridiculous. I know I put my skates in here. For the coolest hockey collectibles in the world, log on to the Hockey Fights Cancer Charity Auction. Brought to you by Dodge, the NHL, and NHLPA. 
and start bidding before somebody beats you to it. Ooh, ow, cold. Hey, no fair. Come back here. Come on, let's go. We gotta get home. It's getting dark. One, the need to be seen at a distance when darkness falls. Two, the innovation. Clothing created from material so amazingly reflective, it can be seen hundreds of meters away. That's 3M Innovation. We help the world see things more clearly because we make the leap from need to innovation. 3M Innovation. <laughs> While OJ continues to hunt for the killer, his attorney Robert Shapiro is here at ringside, huge boxing fan, taking sights in here in New Orleans. J.C. Candelo, Alex Panima, underway round number eight. Kenny, uh, you take a look at some of the numbers in this fight. Uh, it's a very close fight, and it's a, it's a close fight. Oh, uh, now Candela saying he got hit low again. I don't know about that one, Teddy. I don't think that one was that low. Every time. Well, we're going to get a chance to see it, I'm sure. But I tell you, you never know because those cups, as I said, are less really caught underneath the cup. Right, the come cup on, it was on the belt. Not fit it well. It's very hard blow. to get hurt with those but cups, on, quite down. honestly. All right, now, earlier in the fight, but he would definitely tag Candela a lot. Let's take a look here. He's on the belt. It. Let's go. I'm going to give him a foul, but I want see, you to get up, Rewind right? that a little bit. Get take another look here. at it. Ready? Let's see how low it is. Oh, get over here. It's on the belt line. Yeah, and not even in the center, to be take honest with you. A little bit off on the side. They're taking a point away from Bunima. Take another look at it. Looks to be on the left a little bit. No, that's up That's up right on the belt line. It's, it's, a, it's a low shot, but it's... You, you wonder how that could cause that kind of a reaction. All right. Quite honest, it's... You ready to go? It's too high. All right, give me time. Really. I mean, I'm not in his body, Let's I understand go. that, but that looked a little bit too high to cause that kind of problem. Now, his trunks are a little low. They are sagging a little bit. You can see the protective cup sticking out on the top side, but Panema has lost the point for a second low blow. Again, those cups, the leather cups, and inside the leather is high. Very hard if you get caught flush on it. Very hard to really be effective. low blow that Panema threw earlier in the fight was a low blow. And it was coming up a little bit. That one, I know his trunks are a little low, but still on the belt line. Maybe Candela felt he needed a point. Maybe he doesn't want to get hit in the body anymore. And he figured that's a way to stop his opponent from going to the body. For seven rounds, Candelo has only landed 19 jabs of 281. And that is why the taller man has had his problems. And this fight has been made out of spots. Spots where Beneva is real active, inside where he wants to be. Spots where all of a sudden Candelo will be punching like now at the right distance on the outside. Who carries the spots the most to be the winner tonight? And they're both stark contrast to what they have to do. One guy has to punch outside, one guy wants to be inside. Again, you see Candela let those hands go at the right time. It's fairly effective. not gone at the right time more often than not. And to the end of round number eight in the scheduled ten rounder, Candelo and Benima continue the walk. Hey! your sports trivia knowledge on tune in to win with the tsn playbook it's your chance to win great prizes an odyssey sports watch from Whitnauer, a sports pack from tsn a three cd prize package from columbia records or gift packages from jameson laboratories 
to play, you need a copy of the TSN Playbook, available at participating Mr. Sub restaurants and Radio Shack stores across Canada. Hit tsn.ca slash playbook for complete details. What do England's cheddar experts say about Wendy's Cheddar Lovers bacon cheeseburgers? It's really, really good. Just can't wait to bite into it. I'm not going to speak steak this side, yeah? Well, I was trying to get my face around it, but it's uh, quite a job. His mind's bigger than his. Winston, would you like one of the Wendy burgers? Yes. Yes. The flavor could be because nice and cheddar -y. Tomatoes. I say to me, it's really nice texture. Grumptious burger. Love to do his spiffing. Spiffing? Spiffing. That's lovely. Gorgeous. It's a humdinger. Come and try Wendy's Cheddar Lovers bacon cheeseburger. That is very good for something from the colonies. All right, Teddy, was it a low blow from Alex Glenema on the belt line? You can say that it was a low shot, but Candelo went down, spit out the mouthpiece, did time to recover, and Benema lost the point. I don't know if it was that low. Well, if I was the sport of Benema, I would say stay on the guy. Obviously, you don't want to get disqualified, but sometimes that's a sign that a guy's starting to break down a little bit. Just a little bit. So what you want to do is put more pressure on the guy. Give him a little bit of a push. Take a look at the punch numbers through eight rounds. You see, Candelo has been the busier. A lot of slapping punches. He's only landed ten more than Bonima. Bonima's done the harder punches. Dug to the body well. Very close fight, and that point deduction is going to play a huge role in this thing because it's hard to see how the judges can have this a uh, wide margin in either guy's favor. Tell you what, though, that last round, because of what you just mentioned, the cleaner punches, the harder punches, I gave it to Benima, took the point away, made it leave the round, 9-9. are about to borrow some money. Mr. Jones plans to drop into his bank. J.C. Candelo underway, 10th and final round. Very even don't fight. Hold, hold. Round number eight, Benima had a point there. deducted, questionable low blow. Second low blow thrown by Benima in the fight. Candelo went down, spit out the mouthpiece, needed time to recover. Referee Elmo Adolf deducted the point from Benima. Could be huge. Short right hand inside. Candela just ducks away. Well, 
knocks his head down, right? Almost saying don't push down his head. He knows slaps a lot with his punches. You saw at the end of the last round, Terry. He doesn't turn him over. Puts him with that left hook. He gets a quarter over, but not full over. He doesn't hit the full service of the glove sometimes. That's when you that's when you get that little slap. But he's punching at the right distance right now, and he's being real effective. I think he just hurt the Bieber actually coming in. Oh, now Bieber gets tagged. Well, he's dropping right hand from Bieber. Bieber leads in with that left jab, and he's getting caught. Yeah, he got hurt. He started punching at the right distance there, Bob. And that right hand started being real effective for Candelo. Huge turning point in a very close fight. Now Bonima answers back. Yeah, Bonima's catching Candelo stepping back. Right there. Right there. You can step with him. We said it earlier. Don't hold him. Get out of there. Don't now Candelo's the one holding. Don't Comes hold. down to two things now. Bonima's going to try to catch Candelo stepping out. And Candelo's going to try to catch Bonima coming in. Right there. <laughs> Boy, it's a slugfest wow. now. Boy, oh boy. Good right hand by Bonima. It was like Larry Holmes, Ken Gordon, when they fought for the heavyweight title. And it was the 15th round. So he just made it a one-round fight. This is a terrific round. And both are catching each other for specific reasons. Bonima's getting caught because he's leading him with the jab. He's got the left hand down a little bit. He's getting caught with those right hands coming in. And Bonima's able to catch Cadell stepping back. And right now he might look to nail it. Bonima dropped in his 10th round. Trying to drop Candela. Oh, he's oh, he got back. Right. And another right hand. Not be able to go in any round. Again, Benima's able to catch his man going backwards. He's got a tall target. And I think Benima's run out of time. Wow, what a tenth round. Alex Benima, J.C. Candelo. In a fantastic final round, Candelo dropped Benima early in round number ten. A right hand behind the ear. Benima was hurt before that. He battled back. We'll get the judges' scorecards after this. Come on, let's go. We gotta get home. It's getting dark. One, the need to be seen at a distance when darkness falls. Two, the innovation. Clothing created from material so amazingly reflective, it can be seen hundreds of meters away. That's 3M Innovation. We help the world see things more clearly because we make the leap from need to innovation. 3M Innovation. control their emotions. That's that's what it's like to win a Stanley Cup. Through the years, across the centuries, divide and on, men and teams have battled hard to win that gilded jug. Men of steel who'd come and gone. Troopers all who'd scaled the heights to victory. Heroes. Men who held the torch aloft. Legends of Hockey returns with episode one, beginning February 6th, TSN. We're back in New Orleans. Total punches. J.C. Candelo, Alex Bonimi. You see Candelo busier through 225 more punches, but only landed 19 more. Candelo dropped Bunima in the 10th round. Bunima had a point deducted in round 8 for a low blow. Very close bout. Here's the judges' scorecards with our ring announcer, J.D. Lyons. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after 10 action pack rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards, and we have a split decision. I have your score totals here. Judge Kenny Sintas saw the bout at 95-93 for the EM. 
Judge Paul Caesar scores about 95-94 for Juan Carlos Candeo. And Judge Johnny Pena Jr. saw about it 96-93 for your winner by split decision, Alex Molina. How about that, Teddy? He got dropped in the 10th round, but probably wasn't a 10-8 round because he battled back. And even though he lost a point for a low blow, Bonima gets the win. He overcame some big rounds, but he was busy inside. He did a lot of body punches. And as the judges thought, he landed the harder punches. Good quality win for Alex Bonima. Split against J.C. Candelo. Let's check in with Brian and Max. Gentlemen. Bob, oh, thank you very much. That's an outstanding fight. I like Bunima. He's a crowd pleaser, too. Iron Mike, what's he got left? And Julius, woo! We'll be back. And that's why they call it the concerto. <laughs> now to Eileen for Traffic Watch. Well, Bob, it's hard to believe for a Monday morning, but the roads are amazingly clear. It should be smooth sailing all the way into work today. Going along the freeways on the west side of town, we see that all major arteries are virtually empty. And heading into downtown, there seems to be no snags. Yes, sir. Weekend with a great... Way up at the top. Now, a lot of you had written in and said Lennox Lewis and Roy Jones should be on that list. We had to narrow it down. You know, Lennox, highest paid guy right now. But bottom line, Mike Tyson's still the biggest draw in boxing well, based on and, what he used to do. And Lennox also makes money because he has the belt. Tyson makes it with or without the belt. Oh, well, here we go. The weigh-in, Max. Mike Tyson, Julius Francis tomorrow in England. Francis weighing in at 243 and one half pounds. I don't have the stone and everything else. The version. Tape. We'll convert for you. Mike Tyson, 222 and three quarters with hair. That's consistent over the last few years. I don't know what he's doing with that. They have all the jewelry on as well, about a million and a half dollars worth of jewelry as well. So Mike Tyson, Julius Francis tomorrow in England. It says Francis, good quotes here. I'm not fighting Mike Tyson, the celebrity. I'm fighting Mike Tyson, the boxer. We're not going out drinking on the town. I'm not worried about shopping. Meantime, Tyson wearing out his welcome stateside, getting a big star boost in England. Even with a low-level opponent, Europeans kind of just Tyson crazy, and it could be start of a new phase of his career. I've trained hard. I've worked hard. I've watched my uh, Mr. Mr. Tyson um, throughout his career. Um, and as everybody knows, um, he's had a great career. You know, uh, youngest undisputed world champion. Give him respect for that. You know, um, but you know, like I've been saying all along, this is my time. It's all about Julius Francis. Just happy to be here. I don't know about the show. I'm just here to work. I'm, I'm ready, ready to blaze. I look forward to being victorious. I'm in great shape, and I'm just, I can't wait to go. We're um, the lamb to the sacrifice here. But, you know, if he fancies the fight and Tyson's made a mistake, Julius, Julius can win. But, you know, if you go by record books, this should be a free round job at the most for Mike Tyson. Mike understands the sport uh, better than anybody. He understands that anything could happen during a fight. Uh, that's why we prepared to go 10 rounds. If it was just going to be a two or three round fight, that's all we would have prepared for. Oh, well, this is kind of the Europe gimmick, and it's worked. I mean, he's a huge hit out there. He's controversial, but he's being mobbed out there. He really extends his shelf life. I think he was wearing out his welcome here. People were getting less enthused, but now suddenly the enthusiasm is, enthusiasm is back. But enthusiasm. Thank you. <laughs> he said, I didn't do that in plural. Meantime, he's got to have get through this fight. He hasn't had a clean, full fight since 1996 when he beat Frank Bruno. It, uh, it's true, but everyone, I think, saying that Tyson, people are watching him out of curiosity. What's Mike Tyson going to do next? And that's really what's motivating his popularity. I disagree. I think what's motivating people to watch Tyson still is because once he was so dominant that he captured our collective imagination and also he continues to fight extremely aggressively and he can hit with both hands. So I don't think it's just to see what he's going to do next. I think it's 
these other reasons. Yeah, but you know what? After Norris and after everything else, I think he gets less and less now. I think he's just rejuvenated. Diminishing returns. But, yeah. but, but when you start from $30 million a fight, you can diminish down and still be the top draw in boxing. He's getting down there, though. We'll he? see. He's getting we'll down. You're at $10 million, $5 million. Meantime, Julius Francis, take a look at the resume of the guy who will be fighting. This is not Peter McNeely, by the way. This guy has been in there with guys like Ruiz, Maverick, and Vitaly Klitschko. He's gotten knocked out by them, though. He's also fought Axel Schultz and lost to him as well. So Julius Francis has fought guys out there but basically max of course he's there to be beaten by iron mike tyson that'll happen tomorrow night let's bring in teddy atlas right now we're going to size up the heavyweight division and hey teddy you know you got one heavyweight champion now but beyond that you know who do you see rising up and what do you see the guys that are going to be moving up and challenging lennox lewis the one champ well teddy i mean it, it, lennox lewis obviously is the undisputed champion but there are a select group of guys right now that you have to look at as guys who can maybe make a run at his championship. Yes, there are. We, we made a little graphic there, and there it is. I mean, you got the good news is with one heavyweight champion, guys can't sit around like they used to and look for a shot, just wait around for a shot in any of the three divisions. There's only one guy, so of course guys don't want to sit around too long, so it's going to force other guys to fight. Now, these guys, I be a bougie and David Tua and Michael Grant, Mike Tyson, because everybody still wants him and because he's still a draw and because he can punch with either hand, and of course, Holyfield, who was just there. These guys are the guys that should be next in line to fight for the heavyweight title. But then there's other guys. There's guys that are completely untested. All right, well, let's take a look at some of the names of the untested guys. It's amazing that Tyson's still in this mix. As Brian mentioned, the fact that Tyson hasn't even had a full fight in X amount of years. But here are the next group of guys. And you see the guys on the left. They're the untested ones. Vladimir Klitschko has one loss. But you feel the guys on the left should fight some of the guys on the right. Huh? This is like Chinese food, column A, column B. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. One from A, one from B, a little bit bit from C. Who's I mean, your best guys, guy in that group? Well, these guys haven't been tested at all. These uh, Booster and Johnson and Klesko, they've been having a free ride, these guys. And the Klesko brothers, quite honestly, since they fight in Germany, they can get a free pass because they draw money from fighting nobody over there, so they won't get pushed. But these other guys are warriors. Oleg Maskiev, David Eisen, Lou Savarese, Rotman, Derek Jefferson. These guys have fought already. Chris Bird. These guys have taken risks. So they deserve the chance to find out if the other guys, the untested guys, are real or not. All right. So let's get them in there. Now, Teddy, we have the wild card picture. Some guys who have been there, some guys who would like to be there. And, of course, the top name at the wild card list is always Andrew Galata. For the same reasons as Mike Tyson. It's sort of a freak show because you never know what's going to happen with this guy. And we take a look at the list of the wild cards. Yeah, these these guys, these are guys that their careers have had little problems, obviously. They've had some holes in the ground in front of them. So these guys, to get themselves back up there, to be able to reignite their careers, they need to fight each other. That's the way it should be done. And if it's done that way, you clean up the heavyweight, I guarantee you. That's my promise. The heavyweight division get, get cleaned up. And again, getting back to the top, the only reason we have the ability to do this is because there's one heavyweight champ. Everyone can't sit back and wait for their mandatory. It'll take too long. All right, let's send it back to Brian and Max, guys. Max? Yeah, you know, Teddy, I, I like the list very much, but we're talking about guys like Lou Savarese and Derek Jefferson, uh, John Ruiz, Henry Akinwande. We more or less know what these guys have. These guys aren't going to really push any of the top-tier guys. Also, Oleg Maskaev, I think, belongs in that first category, having just knocked out Hasim Rahman. Well, Mas Maskiev, out of the guys that have, should do the testing, he's the most proven warrior. I mean, this is a guy who gets in there. He was in there with David Tua a couple years ago. People forget that. And he was and winning he, that fight. He was winning the fight until the last round when he got caught with the always dangerous David Tua with that left hook. So this is a guy that definitely belongs in there. And I'll tell you another thing. These guys that we saw at the beginning where I said the guys should be tested, they could be tested with any, not only with, only, not only with the Maskiev and those kind of guys, but they could also be tested with the top echelon guys because like I said they're not going to be able to get a title shot right away so those guys like Tua and those other guys if they don't get their title shot let them go in with those undefeated guys and let's find out if they're real or not get rid of the dead wood hey we'll all be happy if they all fight each other guys all right guys thank you very much and one thing the only guy that's in the best of the crop there for you Teddy and Bob that David Tua the only number one contender because then you got Akinwande and John Ruiz and rightly so they didn't even make the top of that list. And that's a problem with the uh, sanctioning bodies that Max is boycotting now. <laughs> <laughs> a big heavyweight is coming up. This guy might make one of these lists soon. Cliff Etienne is on his way. Undefeated heavyweight coming up next on Friday Night Fights presented by Miller High Life. We'll be back right after this.
Hey folks, welcome back to the TSN Newsroom. James Duffy here. The Toronto Maple Leafs doing a little lineup shuffling before tonight's game against the King Center. Yannick Perot returns from injury. Meanwhile, they have waived left winger Chris King. It's a tough business at times, and um, um, you know none of us uh, uh, want to lose Chris. And Chris is uh, obviously a very popular guy in the room, and and. Uh, we hope that, uh, you know, nothing, uh, he doesn't get taken. I feel pretty good. I mean, uh, I think at this point it's more, uh, it's more the timing that might be off a little bit. Uh, but, uh, I mean, uh, uh, my arm's feeling pretty good. Uh, it's feeling strong now, and uh, I, it's ready. Coming up on the early edition of Sports Desk, we'll have highlights from the lone matinee in the NHL. We'll check in with our Super Bowl crew in Atlanta, and we'll have leg iron Mike Tyson back in the ring against Julius Francis. 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. More boxing coming up. Valentine's Day is for lovers. Yes, even sports lovers. People's Jewelers, Citizen, and TSN present the Sports Lover Sweepstakes. Your love of sports can be your chance to win one of five sets of Citizen His and Hers watches. Stop into any People's Jewelers and fill out an entry form telling us what sport you and your Valentine love to watch together. Visit People's Jewelers and enter the Sports Lover Sweepstakes today. There's more to crispy flavor in our box size taters. It's time you tried McCain Tasty Taters. Baked so they're crispy and golden brown on the outside to capture all that tender potato flavor inside. Crispy bite size taters that lock in all the flavor. Meal time, snack time, anytime. McCain Tasty Taters now come in five crispy bite size flavors. Try your favorite flavor in our bite size taters. McCain Tasty Taters. Crispy flavor in a bite size tater. We'll have more Cascar F1 cart and NASCAR highlights after the break. Come on, guys. Let's, come on, guys. Okay, let's go. Jim. Nice and cool. Nice and cool. Okay, a quarter turn on your shirt collar. Nice and easy. Come on, guys. We're running out of time. Reset your monitor. Hold it. Hold it. Watch your speed, Jim. Go, 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 go. Welcome back to the show, everybody. What a great day it was for Canadian race fans. We've got highlights from the Canadian. Well, the tires keep rolling through downtown New Orleans. And we keep rolling through the fights here on Friday Night Fights. Clifford ATN and Marvin Hunt squaring off in a heavyweight bout. Marvin Hunt wearing the black and gold is from Jackson, Tennessee. 29 years of age. Weighted at 211 pounds. 5-1 and one with two knockouts. He is facing the prospect. Six foot two.